welcome in our co-host on the day, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy, doing some Tuesday duty today. I am. John Gilstrap has other things to do, so I'm filling in for John, who's filling in for John, who's the other John. So there's a lot of fill-ins for this seat. I wasn't aware we had that many subs today. Yeah, yeah. I need to put you in charge of the schedule more often. Would you please? Yes. No, I won't. <laughs> also, let's welcome in the Hall of Famer, Matt Miller. Good morning. Good morning to you. I would dare say that Colin is actually working almost overtime right now. Number one, he's trying to keep up with all the injunctions and what's going on, but also you don't know what game to prepare for. So you're kind of preparing for multiple teams sure. to wait and see who is going to play who. And maybe we'll know that today. Maybe we won't know that till Thursday, I hear. So, The head of the SSAC said we're playing games Friday and Saturday this week. Okay. It's not official from the courts, but he says we're playing games Friday and Saturday. So I would plan on having high school football playoff action this weekend. That's what I'm saying, based on what he said. I think we have to. Otherwise, we'll be Christmas before the state championship game. It's got to start now. Yeah, they're running you're run out of time quickly. Mm-hmm. Plus, it moves yeah. the basketball season back for anybody who plays football. Right? Yep. And then you hear Bob Kukin, certain parts of the state could see some snow. Up to 12 inches in yes. the mountainous areas. So that could throw a monkey wrench into games being played. Yeah, because we, we won't get any here, according to Bob, but higher elevations. Out of nowhere, 12 inches of snow. It was like <laughs> 75 last week. But it's time. It's that time of year we expect snow. It's never time for 12 inches of snow, Bill. <laughs> Yeah, unless you're running a ski resort, which I don't. But I do run a talk show, is the rumor. And our guest in this first segment, you may hear the giggling in the background from the president (laughs) and the vice president of the Board of Education, Jackie Long. Good morning to you. Good morning. And that, gi- that giggling was from my vice P. Your your vice P. <laughs> vice P. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> that is a, I like it. Though. I kind of like the ring of that. Let's welcome in the vice P. <laughs> And, and it's her birthday as well. It is, Melissa. Melissa, yeah. she's the double P, Vice the President double. Power. <laughs> Good morning, The Vice Rob. Double P. The Vice Double P, Melissa Power. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we can move off that now. I kind of like that. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think you are. <laughs> Jackie Long. And Jackie brought in food, too. What do you got here, Jackie? This is pretty impressive. Uh, gourmet cupcakes. One out, the first one, Melissa gets to pick the first one because yeah. it's her birthday. This looks like strawberry, some type of chocolate, lemon, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. These are very fancy. Gooey. Where'd you get these? Sam's. Sam's? My goodness. Hey. To send that down to Melissa. She should be the first one to <laughs> eyeball those things. 43, is that uh, the rumor? Yep. It, that is the rumor. Bill, how long ago were you 43? A long time. We were talking about that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, just about twice as long as uh, it's what Melissa is. Yeah, I was uh, 43 in 2006. Yeah. And I was 83, 1983. So. How about you, Matt? When, um, when were you 43? If, you're, were, if you were 2006, I was probably 2008 or nine, somewhere in there, I guess. Or I'm trying to think because you're just a couple years older than I am. So. Yeah. I, I show a lot more wear and tear than you do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who, who's got the chimes? Look, that would be Jackie. Oh, did you? Is that your is that your phone? <laughs> I have heard that chime. I didn't hear it over and over and over again. <laughs> and so I know the chime. And I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I told I told Jackie the other day. I said I'm hearing you tinkle. <laughs> oh well, there you go. <laughs> and, Hence the nickname <laughs> Double P. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give you a little bit more ammunition there. There it went. (laughs) And and this is a talk show, is it? It it used to be. It once it once was. Well, it is visual, so we've got it. Oh, jeez. There you have TV. Yes, we're all watching you turn your phone off right now. Well, I'm trying to um, turn it off. Turn it off. All right, good. Okay. All right, let's let's get into some business here. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I think I turned it off. That might be the saving grace. It right may now. help us. All right. Uh, do you have any information in regards to the SSCC rulings with eligibility and players and schedules and calculations? That, do you guys get briefed on any of this? Only that our um, decision is not going to be uh, appealed. That's the only thing we know. You know, the Spring Mills decision will not be appealed. How, how do you be. how do you know that? Because uh, the W, the SSAC said they weren't going to appeal it. So they'll abide by the nine and one record. And that's mm-hmm. final. So that doesn't delay yeah. anything else. Correct. No. When did they make that announcement? I missed it. I saw it y- uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Was it yesterday. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I missed that. Well, that's good to know because that's one less cog, right? That's one less thing to clog the whole thing up. Uh, 
now I want to go back as well, get off of the SSAC here for a second, and uh, move on to uh, North Middle. Mm -hmm. And the report came out uh, that things were actually progressing pretty nicely. Can you take us through some of the details of that, Jackie and Melissa, and as much as you're familiar with? Well, it was a wonderful board meeting. Um, the The state board was gave us lots of praise, especially the staff at North, for what they have uh, implemented mm -hmm. and um, what and what the board, a state board, actually required us to implement. But the extra things that we have implemented along the way, um, they made walk through you know they're there quite often and there is a, a, someone that they have assigned a facilitator that they have signed to the north for at least three months when you um, say they're there quite often how often is quite often um once a month a couple times a month maybe even more and um, they can do surprise visits at any time yeah mm -hmm. and they don't have to notify the board that they're coming they no. can just they just show up no, they can they just, just show up, up. yeah but the, you know the idea is for us not to hide anything the idea is for us to get better and better and better and they and they actually they really are they're doing mm -hmm. a great job over yeah. there they've implemented some good practices can you tell us about some of those practices and how they've been effective um, well for one thing they have uh, put um, an assistant uh, principal in each wing mm -hmm. the sixth seventh and eighth wing that um, totally you know uh, it helps keep the, the, the behaviors this, yeah. Um, more in line and in control mm -hmm. and and anything a teacher needs in that area or they're they're right there yeah that, that's where they're located um, teachers have reported that they feel more support um, as it relates to um, classroom management one of the other things is um, I believe and Jack you can correct me if I'm wrong um, there are no vacancies at this time in no, North there are Middle. no vacancies they're they're all filled um, so that it, that was crucial um, to prioritize North Middle for that purpose to get it into a stable place mm -hmm. um, because of uh, some of the some of the in inconsistencies are crazy that some people might might define as crazy that was going on there. Well, and so. plus plus the vacancy they filled with uh, certified teachers. Yeah, which is very important. So that that really helps there. Um, mm -hmm. I was over there for a Veterans Day um, event and this the students were well behaved um staff seemed happy and you know I, I know that we have a long way to go there sure um but very very pleased with mr pitsnoggle's leadership how, and the rest of the staff how big yeah. of a role has principal kevin pitsnoggle played in the turnaround of that school uh, pivotal in my opinion um so you know holly started Holly uh, Holly yeah, Kleppner. Holly Kleppner started there as the interim principal uh, at the end of the year last year. And um, bringing Kevin on board um, has really um, helped provide that stability. And, you know, he is a relatable uh, gentleman, mm -hmm. um, especially for our youth um, at that school. He has the ability to really identify with them. Um, and I think that's that that's part of you know um getting that relationship st established with them um you i have seen a remarkable growth in him so he's not just encouraging his staff to grow and to to change and evolve he's doing it himself so when you see a leader doing it themselves it gives you more encouragement and more hope to do it for yourself and for your classroom and it, it's just it's trickled down so it's it's a good thing it's well a very good thing. plus um he, he will tell you it's not him it's the entire it's team mm -hmm. and they're all working together yep. and when I say the students look up to him, they do. They really they do. Really do. <laughs> Quite literally. Quite yeah. literally. Yeah. I think he's been a great asset there. Yes. Yes. So. Well, the initial report was damning on several fronts. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, discipline was one aspect. The morale among the teachers. The uh, the academic scores they were very low just across the board they were pretty damning and you're you've mentioned there's improvement on certain areas mm -hmm. uh with most improvements kind of uneven so you see some with more improvement than others what are some of the areas that you still need more emphasis more work on i think any uh any time well for all of our schools we actually can um implement the practices that were um that's happening at North to our other schools and and even with test scores they they're not going to come up uh, 
drastically um, just because of the last three months. It's a process. So I think I think personally, I, from where I'm sitting, I think this first year is about getting that environment established and getting that solidified so that the kids know what to expect, that they understand the stability that's there, the teachers can bank on that stability and the support. Um, and then from there, we will see a, a, a change in academics, but I don't know that we're going to realize that fully or um, in in a sizable increase until probably next year. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just the reality of it. We've it it takes you a very small amount of time to make a mess, and it takes you a long time to fix it. So this is we are in a a marathon um, that is that is long, and we're just in the first little sprint. Well, so. and I think Jeff Kelly, uh, who's been over the, the um, North Middle, and is over that department at the uh, uh, Department of Ed, um, said it best when, mm -hmm. you know, the last time he was here with us, he, he met with uh, Superintendent Sachs and Melissa and myself, mm -hmm. that um, when his, his walkthrough, there was, ac there was, con there was, um, good catch. Yeah. <laughs> instruction going on. Yeah great instruction going on uh, the students were uh, attentive um, no behaviors misbehaviors in the classroom Every, you know it was it was like it should be yeah teachers so, were engaging with the know, kids and yeah. stuff like it, it was all around good. good yeah so Matt Miller so when someone from the state as you said can kind of go through that school at any moment in time how often do they come back and report to you all the things that they are seeing well, there is a uh, staff person there. Um, I, th I think actually she's there every week or every couple weeks mm -hmm. that um, works with Holly Kleppner and um, Kevin Pitt Snoggle regularly. And then someone uh, else from, like I said, Mr. Kelly or someone else comes to the school. And then, of course, all that's reported back to Dr. Staff. and. Doctor staff, doctor, <laughs> <laughs> doctor Sachs, and um, he reports to us. Well, and one of the things I will say is, is um, we, in the experience that I've had for this year, um, and what I've seen, they give immediate feedback on certain things right mm -hmm. there with the staff members that are walking with them through the school, and then afterwards, you know, at least when we sat down with Jeff um from the state board um he actually not only did that feedback at the time they were doing the walkthrough but then sat down with us and provided us all the feedback and then said do you have any questions so they're they are open for feedback they're open for us to ask any questions that we want um it this relationship has really it, it's been it's been amazing the key to, i'm sorry Okay. No. The key is communication. That's Correct. That's what you've yes. been talking about. Yeah. Does this imply there was inadequate communication before that caused some of the problems? I can't. I can't say, and I can't say uh, that either because I, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not going to go down that road because no. at this point we've established a good norm now. Um, we can sit here all day long and do you know what you know what yeah. could have should have would have, mm -hmm. but. Um, at the end of the day, if we're seeing a difference in communication now, obviously there was something there before, but I'm not going to go down that road right now. Fair enough. But, but you can, you can, hopefully you're examining it though, because you can learn from your mistakes so you don't repeat them. Yeah. And there are for us. I know as board members, we're asking different questions, um, but that's from our perspective. That's not, what we can do. We can change how we're looking at things in questioning. Plus Jeff Kelly, uh, told the state board that, um, when he sat down with us, we didn't make any excuses. We mm -hmm. want to move forward. Um, you know, mm -hmm. North Middle, my, what occurred there to me, um, helped tremendously to us. Uh, I don't want to say kudos to them coming and taking over, but it, w it, it should have happened. Well, when this did happen, there was talk about uh, changing the uh, boundaries for where the enrollment came from. They said a lot of this was there's too many kids from poor neighborhoods that are coming into North Middle 
and it might not be fixable unless we we change the, the lines around so there's not such a giant concentration of poor children. But now, with a different leadership in charge, there's a different story. So was the makeup of the school overblown in terms of the behavioral problems and the academic underachievement that was going on there? Is, is, was was a, a leadership fix really the issue here? I, I think that um, those boundary issues don't just um, affect North. They affect those, the feeder schools also. Mm-hmm. So I think we have boundary issues in this county period, which we're going to have to uh, redistrict. How are they fixed? Who, who does the redistricting? Uh, well, um, one thing, the comprehensive plan that we're... Um, is it voted on by the by the public, or is it something done by the school board? It's, the, something, the, it's something that the lines are drawn up again from to see what additional uh, areas that we can take in and move around um, to, but my, to fit you, into those schools. Yeah, my question is, who has a purview of that? Who has responsibility? Well, before, uh, we had a department that... Um, totally worked on redistricting. Dr. Kilman worked on that, and she did a wonderful job. Um, now we work with, uh, we have a consulting company that's working with us to tell us more about our issues and where we are going, but we'll have to get that those but boundary issues. We, we will have what, to get. But the final decision rests with the school board? Yes. Yes. Okay. The final decision will end up resting with us. And here's, to go back to even Rob's question, um, I think we were exploring all avenues to try and determine what mm-hmm. was wrong, what was going on, and we have to explore all those. And I think it was a reasonable question or a reasonable observation to make. Um, I will say one of the things that Jackie and I saw down in um, Charleston was we um, were able to see some um, blue ribbon schools um, be awarded, uh, three of them, in fact. Um, in our state. And I'm not going to remember the exact name, so pardon pardon me for that, but there is one particular school that has a high poverty rate for their school and their blue ribbon. Um, and blue ribbon's given out, you know, very sparingly. So it's not, it. it is achievable. I think um, it, it's not always that poverty equals or should equal, um, you know, lackluster to to grades or academic success i think i think there's there's a few different facets that come into play with this particular school and that is one of them but i think overall there's it's multifaceted well for the reasons. and we have had blue ribbon schools in berkeley county yes mm-hmm. um and i think we'll get back there and i think we'll get there but actually since our growth i have not seen that as much our growth and our uncertified staff and everything that compounds to our problem um high numbers in the classrooms mm-hmm. where those other schools that and, and this They're lower. and, and mm-hmm. congratulations to them yeah absolutely. but you know when you have 15 17 students in a classroom or 100 kids in your school or 125 it, it it's a little different than when you have between 600 and 800 kids in a school but congratulations to them because it's well deserved speaking of those numbers did the numbers go up or down at north middle school coming out of what was going on last year and coming into what's going on this year as far as population as far as right school population is is it a a lower population this year than say it was last year were there families that decided things that were going on that they, their kids maybe went somewhere else or all of our schools had an increase in population i was okay. going to say no, yeah. i don't know of any school that went down no, no none of all our of schools us, all went of them down. went up all right does on on an average or do we have more students in a classroom than what other parts of states do because, yes because it's significant more well, I mean, well, it depends it, on the it, region. <laughs> and once in uh, K through five, you can only have up to twenty-five kids in a classroom, and that, and it's actually twenty-two, and you get a waiver. But uh, and and I and from my thinking, I think even um, uh, middle school, there's a number to where you can only go up to a certain amount. But then, then that means you have to add more classrooms and more teachers 
So it's a vicious cycle. And that carries kind of around to something we may want to discuss uh, uh, next section, the SBA, What, uh, how much money we're asking for. Mm -hmm. have, ha has a decision been made yet? No, I, I expect that decision won't be made until maybe in December. Okay. They yeah, had. I think they're, they're hearing the, the, the cases now, correct? Yeah, correct. Yes, yesterday and today. They and, have $22, $225 million worth of wants. And they have $54 million to give out. And how much are we in Berkeley County asking? We are just asking for $4 million to add extra classrooms to Inwood Primary um, that we have already outgrown and we haven't started. So mm. we had 2,805 2, homes built in Berkeley County yeah. last year. So, so last year, if memory serves, you got around twenty-eight, thirty something million dollars. Twenty-five, twenty-five million. 25. 25 million. Yeah. Okay, Given yeah. out over a three-year period. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So this time, we're instead of asking for a comparable number, we're asking for a much more modest number. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that strategic? So it doesn't look like you're always asking for the, the most amount of money you can possibly get, or were there really less needs this this time? No, I, I mean we always need more. Yeah, we I mean need we, more. we 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 we. I, I think we were looking at okay, what is our current bond plan? Um, what is our current um, you know in construction means? What are we doing currently? Um, and what can we show that we are trying to facilitate ourselves? Because we don't want to just say we're constantly going to you for money and we're not doing anything ourselves. We're not. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to figure out ways to to figure this out too. Um, Plus, we have to. We're still. Uh, we're still um, working on our bond money that we mm -hmm. um, asked the taxpayers for. So then, actually, when we put more rooms into Hedgesville um, Pre-K Academy, we added ourselves at it four more classrooms there to make it 12. Yeah. That's what we want to do to Enwood also, plus a larger, um, I don't want to call it a play area. It's not a play area. It's it, a it, social it, well, area. It it's, uses it uses the different, so if you have, if you have students who um, um, have any any autism or, or autism spectrum, you, mm -hmm. you know, kids that are going there, there there's going to be activities in that room that will help for them, there will be things that that students who might not have autism that couldn't utilize that room. There's, it's a it's a it's a common um, area for you to be able for students in in the pre K arena to go in and be able to to exercise, but also do it in a way that works for them and their unique. Mm -hmm. their uniqueness so it's similar to like a sensory room yeah, yeah that's what i was trying so to there's, get out. There, there's other yeah there will yeah. be other activities but right. it's there will be some plus we want to increase the outdoor area there. yes mm -hmm. that was one of the biggies stay where you are don't move a muscle not one i was actually talking to the audience you you can move around oh. in the commercial break we have uh <laughs> our break here coming up we need help jackie <laughs> we need help just mangled her headsets and Melissa this is funny now this is Melissa trying to fix Jackie's headsets I don't know what happened during the break everything was fine when I stopped and I come back and Jackie's all twisted not a whack I think you need to rephrase that I like the way I put it for the first time <laughs> Uh, very us, good. Yeah, I, I'm going to bring us back to reality. We <laughs> talked about the. Uh, yes, the reality the, is I'm not twisted enough. You're not twisted, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bill, oh Bill, I'll host the show. You'll co host the show. <laughs> <laughs> Am I interrupting, Rob? Bill, co uh, you'll co host the show. I, but I have a question, Rob. <laughs> oh, good, Bill. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. The uh, uh, s s classrooms and the like in school board. Uh, a few years ago, where the objective was to eliminate the need for temporary classrooms, of course we're com with with all the growth. Where are we now with that? How many how many temporary classrooms do we have? Well, we talked about that yesterday because the SBA asked us that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have temporary classrooms at every school, and we're not talking one classroom. Some schools have pods of four and eight, so that tells you where we are every uh, I mean even the newer schools have 
pods. Yeah, we oh, can't yeah. keep up with the growth. I think that was one of the things that we reviewed at one of our recent board meetings. Um, I want to say it was was it last last week or the week before? Maybe. I. I'm starting to get all these weeks blurred together here. Um, but one That's of the... Your age. <sighs> Golly, here it's we go. That birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, one of the things that we were reviewing was, according to our previous population study, where are we at currently with that, with what was projected? And we're actually above the highest, uh, more, the more aggressive projection. They gave us three. One that was a very conservative number, one that was middle of the road, and one that was very aggressive. And when we originally were reviewing the bond, we went with the middle of the road because we didn't want to, uh, we wanted to be conservative, but we didn't want to over um, compensate well we ended up missing the ball on that one because you can't predict these sure. are just predictions um, and unfortunately we are well above that um, aggressive number um, by uh, two percent and by the time they get to 2030 we will be well above the three percent of above that aggressive number I'm hopeful with this new study that they're doing especially with um, the the more the established relationship um, we've we've established a, a better communicative communicative relationship with um, the planning commission um, that hopefully we'll be able to better um, gauge what that looks like as far as our growth um, and I think that's what hindered us because as soon as you start planning for one number mm -hmm. and then it increases exponentially. Um, more than what you're anticipating, it, it just you're in this vicious Melissa, cycle. Jack, I've, plus, I've talked to the county we commissioners. Knew what, plus, plus, we knew what we felt we could ask the taxpayers for, um, and that was a big concern to us when you're we're trying to get a bond passed. Yeah. I've talked to the county commissioners and asked this question. Mm -hmm. You know, can you stop uh, development? The answer is no. If they meet all the Right, that's what check we marks hear. that, that the answer is yep, no. I can't what, stop. That's what we know. But can it be directed into other areas of the county where it might be easier to fit another thousand people? You'd have to ask them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know that law. But so that that hasn't come up as a question for the planning committee when you when you folks talk to them because yeah. they well, told me the same thing the county commissioners say as long as the developer checks the boxes we have to approve it. There's there's no zoning so you can't say no. That is what we are aware of. Well, it's, because um, I mean it looks like we're growing in every area of the county, so I don't know. I don't know what could, area you're yeah, going to point them in anymore. Well, impact fees something the county will be looking at mm -hmm. and implementing, uh, and there's going to be a lot of. Uh, spoons in that pot asking for funds mm -hmm. uh, jefferson county recently uh limited their impact fees for education for one dollar i think they yeah. did that for strategic plan will you be asking for support from impact fees we uh, we, we presented mm -hmm. uh, a plan to a consulting fee that the commission has hired to help them with their the process of okay. that so and going back to what we discussed the uh, first segment uh, the school building authority and you asked for four million dollars and Rob asked for strategic or what the reason for kind of a modest amount with our growth why do we not go more aggressive with every request for the school building authority? well you want you want to make sure you can get something you can't there are they were around 28 people presenting from what I remember, uh, there was one county that wants uh, 20 or 25 million, and they'll probably get that. So that leaves, what, 24 I, I, million? I understand I, the math there, but my point is we have such demands. You said a couple minutes ago the number of temporary pods we still have. Mm -hmm. uh, I would think we have a very compelling argument due to our growth to ask for a large amount every year. Well, you would think that, but that's not the way the SBA. But the SBA. Uh, it's just one entity. I will say this much. I've gone to legislators and said, we need, we need help. We need, yeah. we need some level of help because if we look at this from um, the perspective of, you know, how the state is functioning, they want to grow the business. And that's great. I'm not necessarily opposed to that. Um, and we've got several businesses that have come into the area um, from what the state legislators are doing. And that's and that's great. The only problem with that, though, is we're not seeing it on the back end where we have the ability to provide the, the classroom and the school space for it. And so now there's this we're in this quote vicious cycle that we're you know you give us more business you get you increase the population but yet we can't 
educate. So now, now what do you do? And I've gone back to, I have asked legislators to, to help us in that respect. Um, I know that we've, we, I I was going to say last year, I believe we all expressed that we needed help um, from them um, when we sat down with our, our, our legislators for a legislative board of education, you know, collaborative meeting. We'll have another one at some point. We're in the process of getting that set up. Um, so I don't have a date for when that happens, but that'll be a co- part of the conversation that, you know, we need some help here. And this is this is a monumental piece here in the Eastern Panhandle. And we're not the only ones in the state that are starting to experience this issue when you bring in business. Um, and there's not a lot of either roads or, and let's talk about that. Let, you know, well, not from that perspective, but it's one of those, you have to bring up transportation, you have to bring up healthcare. It's not just education, it's all of it. So um, I, we need help in, in Berkeley yeah. County well, from and, a lot of One of the things that was said yesterday at, 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 in the SBA, one of the gentlemen said, uh, well, 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 Berkeley County has uh, unique um, differences where you're you're building schools and get and uh, obtaining more students while the rest of the state is closing schools. Um, you know that's so much better for you all. Well, we didn't actually comment, but no, it isn't so much better for us to we have build different schools. Problems. Yeah. We have different problems than they than they don't they. It's hard for them. I thank heavens for Sandy Hamilton on the SBA yep. yeah. because she can explain our difficulties. And Sandy's at those meetings now, by the way. I've yes. been in touch with Sandy about getting her on the program, and that's not going to be able to happen this week, but uh, perhaps it will happen uh, in December. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am sound like a bulldog, and my apologies for that. Uh, but I, I'm still puzzled with with all the demands and i understand we need to, the sba is only one source i i know i understand all that but the sba limited sba we did get 25 million last year and we still have appreciable needs the needs have not gone away i don't understand the strategic thinking of asking for four million to only four million dollars this year when we still have these needs bill I can't. I don't think I can explain it any better. You I, I hope you can. So. Yeah, because yeah. you don't go in there asking for the moon, and you might get nothing. You have to, you you know, you have to have a plan what you're going to spend your money on. Now, our, our most of our money for the uh, uh, the 25 million that we're going that we got last time will go to the new Falling Waters School well, I, and the other pre-Ks. I, I would hope that you have a plan. We do well, have no, a plan. No, well, that, that is it, part of then, the plan, then though. if you have a plan, why do not ask for well, as aggressive? Oh, hold, hold on one second. Yeah. Is, is when you ask for something, is it all or nothing? It can well no no, no. but well, I mean you can go back you go back can go back to the SBA every year you can no but when you, you ha- when you ask logical. this year for four million do you get four million or zero or do you you ask for four and you might get two could be could be you ask for twenty five you might get fifteen it depends it, okay. it depends on how they they yeah, land like, their plane when, at the end of the day on the decisions that they have present you know in, in the situations that they're presented with we got a huge percentage last year. um last year and 2022 and i would dare say that we do not want to alienate ourselves mm-hmm. by through the entire state by going in and being so aggressive that while we do need it and i'm not arguing that you know could we have asked for more maybe and and go down that road but we asked for so much last year so it was and we strategic. got such it is a strategic yeah. thing yeah. and the next time we go down next year it might be more than four million it it might I not be it it depends on what we're going to be doing next year and this Dr. is Sachs literally a yearly thing better. Yeah, he's this, on tomorrow. This yeah. is a yearly thing, so this isn't where this is a all or you know one, once and done. The other thing, keep in mind that right now the way that our building is, we are trying to um, we are asking for this to help facilitate the promises that we have made to to the public for the, for what we put in the bond. Um, people would could say well then you're not fulfilling your promise if you need extra help well no we we're doing this to the best of our ability and when you use projected numbers that you don't know are absolute at the time you're planning it gets it gets very difficult 
we are trying to make sure that we are being fiscally responsible with the dollars that the taxpayers have given to us to spend. And we are trying to make sure that, because this money is coming from taxpayers. SBA has money, but this is coming from taxpayers. So it, we've got to make sure that we are being fiscally responsible with this. So how far out do you look and make those projections to then ask for money? In other words, you just mentioned the $25 million that was recently uh, allotted That's, by the SBA is being yeah. given over a three-year period. So are you looking at projects three, four, five years down yes. the road asking for money now? We're asking for money now when where we're, where we're needing it in the immediate but there are projects that are down the road that we're already starting to look at and, and plan what that looks like for next year. So we're not asking the SBA for money at this point in time, say for another high school that we know is no, needed in the no, county. No, you no. have to wait until you're on top Correct. of that. Yeah. Because they want to see the plans. They yeah. want to see how we're using it. You have to present um, schematics. You, oh, you yeah. have to present all and We're that. not there yet. We're not there yet for that new high school. So that's part of the And here's the process. other thing. If we present it now, <laughs> it's going to change between now mm -hmm. and then. So, I mean, and, and then what do you do when you've told the SBA, this is what we're going to do, and then you go and change it potentially even drastically? Uh, I don't know if I want to go down that road. Well, I mean, we've even changed the plans for the Inwood Pre-K Academy. So, yeah. you know, that's how how far our needs changed. There was a time when Inwood Middle, I think, was one of the biggest schools in the entire state. If you I mean Musselman? I'm sorry, yeah, Musselman Middle, I think, was one of the biggest schools in yeah, the entire it, state. Yeah, it was at one time. Right? So when you build that newest high school, the fifth high school in Berkeley County, is there a cap on the size it can be? Uh, I don't think, because Inwood high, um, Musselman High School has 1,800 kids. So, I mean, there's a cap as far as square footage, how many students that you can put in a school in a school per square feet per but square is there is there a cap on what well, we need to build a high school that's 25 percent bigger than the last one we built because there's so much growth in berkeley county well, can yeah, you do that i'm sure yeah, if the funds are there can yeah, you do that sure and the property's mm -hmm. there that you can fit the school on yeah and we have 150 acres there mm -hmm. but when, they'll, but we'll also have to show why we're doing it and we can yeah. we can reasonably show that i would think yeah when you look at the student growth, it, how do you project or can you project and, and what are you actually seeing when it comes to the, the student population growing more on the elementary level, more on the middle school level, more on the high school level, uh, or it's everywhere. It, it's everywhere? It's everywhere. It's across the board. Yeah. Across the board. Well, so you look worn out when you say that. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, it, it, is, is it, is, it, is, it does wear you out because when you look at what we need and what we can deliver and because of our abilities both from a, a, a manpower as well as infrastructure i mean it it is staggering i don't know how many times i've not slept because of some of these of issues I was and I, I was and I was getting ready to say and I've asked Jackie, are you not sleeping <laughs> because <laughs> I'm not sleeping? Am I am I making a mountain out of a molehill? And she's like, no, it's it's a mountain. Well, and our total plus, student population is what? It's twenty thousand fifty two. Yeah. And how has that gone up, say, from the last handful of last years? Last year, at the beginning, it was nineteen six seventy two. Uh, well, no, last year at the beginning of the year, oh. I want to say it was at it was just it was just shy of nineteen thousand. Hmm. Um, no, it was over nineteen thousand at the beginning yeah. of last year. Yes, and then we it would increase to. Um, um, 19,600. I know we've increased over 2,000 from, right. from two years ago does, when I started. That, well, that doesn't include any charter school students? No. That, so no, that's our students. And, and how that's many students, students did you lose to charter schools? Uh, I don't know. They come back and forth so much. They, I was going to say, they go back and forth. I don't know that we yeah, have, I don't know I can give you that number at the top, off we, the top uh, of my head. I mean, we can get that. Dr. Sachs can Yeah, I just, that. off the top of my head, I can't give you that. Is it a significant number? Is it 1,000 mm -hmm. students or is it oh, more like no, a couple hundred? No, no. Probably a, I know last year it was a couple hundred. I was just going to say it's, it's and that it's, includes homeschool. How about Hope Scholarship students? Is, have you seen a decrease because of that? Well, Hope Scholarship can do homeschool, homeschool and then and private and private. Uh, uh, any idea what that population is? That that two hundred includes um, 
those leaving, those leaving and coming back. coming back. It doesn't matter which which avenue yeah. you're so going. So, in other words, that that hasn't been a big enough siphoning to decrease no. your public school. But that was the initial fear. Yeah, it was the fear, mm -hmm. but right that but you were going five thousand students were going to get out of the public schools, take the money, yep. and go someplace else, and you're going to be left with a lot less money to fix the building. Well, yeah. uh, but I don't know. Since now everybody can get uh, the Hope Scholarship, um, could be significant. What? I don't know how that'll affect. But it hasn't been so far. It hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't it we haven't seen it. it. No. And you also have to have the private schools, you know, they, they're going to have limits as well. So you've yeah. got to have enough of those schools to be able to pull out, you know. Do we have enough in our area that would pull 5,000 students Garetti, out of the public? Garetti closed. Right. St. Joe's is starting a high school. Mm -hmm. right. Well, they're, you know, they're popping up everywhere. So They are. Yeah. One thing I will say is, is when we start out at the beginning of the year, we have a, a number. And then when at the end of the year, we have another number that, that we're given, right? Um, and it's it's staggering to know that when you start out the school year, I'm giving representative numbers. Mm -hmm. Do not quote me on these. <laughs> these are just representative examples. If you start out at the, at the beginning of the school year, 19,000 students, by the end of the year, you could have 19,500 students. Um, and those 500 students, if they were not enrolled in our schools prior to October 1st, October 30th. I'm sorry, October 30th. Yes, October. Um, again, October. We, we, don't, get we don't get the money for it. So not, we neither have federal to fund. nor state? No. No. So if a kid graduates in December, does that. Well, the federal, I, I'm sure, excuse me, I'm sure the federal funds keep coming. But uh, I, I think that is also based on um, a certain period for that they have to be. But we won't off. see, and we won't, we won't see, see that. that. If a kid graduates in December, does that kid still count in May as school population and for federal funds, or is that kid off the books and that's one less? For federal, I don't know how that. I, works I don't know how that fund. works. No, I don't know. All right, I want to. I want to go back real quick, just because I have to have an answer for this in no. my head. This goes back to the Spring Mill situation oh, and the kid, okay. right? Yep. Spring Who, Mill who's the, nineteen the years old? SSAC oh. yeah, the SSAC, the SSAC, the McKinney yep. Vento, right? Yep. So this was a guardianship issue, but the kid was eighteen when he enrolled in the school. So as an eighteen-year-old, you are an adult. So if I was eighteen and me and my parents split up, and Let's say I, w I started school late, so my senior year I'm 18, and I got, I got a job, I got my own place, and I'm moving into the Berkeley County School District. Why do I need a guardian or guardianship to be a student in the school when I'm already 18? I guess you'd have to ask the state that. I don't know. Or, Is it or, required, though, that I, as an 18-year-old, if I sign up to go to school, I have to have an adult <laughs> guardian? I think anyone that's uh, registered in the school has to have a guardian, a legal guardian. Even if I'm 18, 19 years old? Well... I don't know if you'd be in the school at 19. You might That's be. That's your special. If you started late or you got held back a year, you could be. I don't know that too many students are. And yeah, but for the 18-year-old, yeah, you have to have a guardian. I wonder why. I'm a, I'm a legal adult. I can serve in the military. I can die for my country. I can't enroll in I'm, I'm not cross-examining no, you. I, it's I just puzzling to me know. that I can't sign up to go to high school as an 18-year-old without a parent. Right. I have no idea. I didn't mean to bring the show to a yeah. breaking halt. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say. <laughs> you did a, an impeccable yeah. job there, yeah. Rob. I as, as the host, I have a certain <laughs> set of skills. You, you left us <laughs> both speechless. So. Yeah. I, I want to circle back to the temporary uh, uh, structures we have now for classrooms. What about security? Mm -hmm. uh, how much of a problem, I would imagine this would present a significant problem for security. It's I, a concern. It, it is a concern. I don't want to go too far down that road. Bill, why not? Why not? Um, well, because I have no idea who's listening. Yeah, that's fair. That's okay. right. Okay. I don't know who's listening, and I know I know many of our folks on on Facebook might be you know not happy with that answer, but I don't know who's listening. Well, I'm not going to go down that road. We we you know we have some resource officers, and they look uh, out for those uh, areas as just they do any other area, and there's uh, alarm on those. Keep pads and things like that. Yeah, on the I, I, I keep circling back to this funding issue from virtual. Do most of the counties in the state use, utilize uh, temporary classrooms to the same extent Berkeley County does? No. No. Then, then why couldn't, from the security element alone, why could that not be an argument for uh, continual, robust funding? Well, number one, 
you don't spend two hundred thousand dollars. Safety is uh, the utmost security, uh, utmost importance. Ish importance for us, yeah. for our kids and academics. However, if you're going to have a classroom there for a year, um, you don't put a three hundred thousand dollar security system in it that you can't use again. So, but but do we make those? And I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole either because <laughs> of who's listening. We make those buildings secure. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're missing my. I got your I, point. I, I, I think, I think I'm getting your, your, your point. I, I, I guess he wants to know why we don't install I, I just, more no, robust no, security no, systems in no, those buildings. No, that's not and I, that's not. Oh. That's not well, I point. lost your point. Then. Um, the point I think he's trying to make is why don't we use that as a reason for um, pushing and being more aggressive when we're asking for funds? I think at the end of the day, Bill, um, um, we're going to end up. The SBA don't have does not have enough money. Period period from the state from the ledge hold Plus, on hold on it tell uh, here's here's where i would here's where i would go with it the amount of money we need for the infrastructure here for just schools is years years of sba funding all at one time there's no way that we're going to be able to um to navigate that and then when when you throw in some of the other concerns that that we have when it comes to um, making sure that we have the right staff, like there's so many monumental problems to try and and for for Berkeley County itself, this is one of many problems. I mean, staffing is another problem. We can build the school, but if we don't have the people to staff it, then now now there's going to be different questions. So I don't think we're not going to be able to solve all this in in a one hour segment. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, trust me, we we hear you. We we understand what you're saying, and it's just it's it's just monumentally plus, hard on all fronts. Plus, safety and security systems were in the were in our last SBA um, once. Mm -hmm that we got money for and we have been we spent a lot of money on uh, security updates bill is just channeling his inner tom cruise as jerry Maguire. he's just uh, show I, me the money that's yeah. no, that's no. bill actually actually, actually no i i do think there's a large <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that man i just and i know i appreciate the fact sba has an x has a limited amount of money i appreciate the fact that all elements of the state has have needs but I also appreciate the fact that we are in a unique position that we should not let the SBA off the hook just because mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of money. And I think we should be aggressive every time we can, asking for as much as we can I legitimately don't support. Think that's the, I don't think the SBA is where we need to be aggressive. Well, we... Legislature is where you need to be yeah, aggressive. Yeah, that's where we need to be the aggressive person. Well, I'm not finished, but I guess I will. You be. are, because the music says <laughs> that the music is all powerful, Jackie. I can't, uh, I can't stop the music. Thank you for coming in, though. See, it yeah. wasn't hard to fill an hour. No, it wasn't. <laughs> right? Right. I think Melissa even wanted a second hour to get further into this with Bill. No! <laughs> yes! Happy no! birthday, by the way, Melissa. Thank get you, Get your sir. cupcake on the way out the door. I will. <laughs>